This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, this is a 45-year-old lady with a postipolar like cataract and we have a central nodal cataract with few ring opacities. I got the OCT of the lens done which is suspicious. So my strategies are aimed to minimize the occurrence of posterior capsule tear. I have previously published a video titled When Less Is More, highlighting the importance of performing a low pressure surgery in polar cataracts. If you haven't seen that video yet, please do watch it. Back to this case. So I'll be using the low flow, low pressure surgery and let's see how things go. I'm conscious uh, not to overinflate the chamber at any stage. In this case, I'm aiming for an oval rexus, which is a technique propagated by my friend Dr. Kiranjit Singh for such polar cataracts and we'll discuss the benefits of this variation of the rexus as we go along. I'm aiming for a rexus so that the longer diameter of the rexus is parallel to the axis of my main incision. The rexus is oval alright, but I thought I would have preferred a slightly bigger one. No hydrodissection and no nucleus rotation. Please note the parameters before I start. I cut the bottle height at 30 cm and correspondingly low flow rate and vacuum. The plan is to create a trench and then continue with the stop and chop technique. A narrow long trench is created. Inside out hydrodelineation is performed. Well, I don't see the golden ring but I don't want to repeat it once again so that I just want to avoid the rise in intracapsular back pressure rise. The trench is deepened and the nucleus is divided into two halves. Chopping is difficult as the nucleus is soft. The bottle height continues to be low. By using very low power, the fragment is finally engaged and pulled out of the bag and then emulsified quite easily. The second heminucleus is similarly pulled out of the bag and aspirated quite easily. Now time to remove the epinucleus and the cortex. Well, there is a principle to be followed here. I would delay the aspiration of the central part of the epinucleus and the cortex complex and keep it for the last. So the aim is to first deal with the peripheral aspect of the epinucleus and cortex, try to strip them to send repeatedly and in the last deal with the central portion which obviously will be the weakest part of the PC. The edges of the distal portion of the epinucleus are getting trimmed. Removing the proximal part of the epinucleus, that is the sub-incisional part, is going to be challenging. Before removing the handpiece, the OVD is injected into the chamber to prevent shallowing of the antechamber. I prefer to perform viscodissection of the epinucleus. I am injecting viscoelastic under the proximal sheet of epinucleus and the oval rexus. The cortex is being peeled off and consequently, the epinucleus is pushed towards the center. The thick epinucleus is difficult to aspirate through the bimanual aspiration cannula. So the phaco tip comes into action again and the epinucleus is aspirated quickly and efficiently. Before removing the handpiece, the OVD is injected into the chamber. Time to aspirate the remaining cortex. Please note the bottle height, it continues to be low and the other parameters are consequently decreased to balance this out. It does make the procedure very slow but it definitely prevents the blowing out of the weak PC because of overpressurization. The epinucleus in the cortex everything is aspirated but the central nodal plaque continues to be there sticking onto the posterior capsule. 
I try to blow it away gently by irrigating with BSS, it does not work. Trying it with OVD, still does not work. Finally, I hold it with the forceps and just peel it off. So luckily, the PC continues to be intact. The capsule is cleaned by gently flushing out the remaining sticky cortex. Once the cortex is out, the bag is filled with OVD. Then the IOL is placed into the bag. OVD is removed from under and above the lens, again using a very low bottle height. Finally, the stromal hydration is done. That's it, the case is done. This is the first day post-op picture and she was fine. So let's quickly summarize. This was a postipolar cataract suspect patient. The surgery was planned and the strategies were changed to prevent the uh, occurrence of any posterior capsule tear. So I followed the principle of low flow, low pressure surgery throughout the procedure. From the point of injecting ovary into the eye to the point of stomal hydration for wound closure, care was taken that the eye was always kept soft. Overinflation or pressurization of the chamber was consciously avoided. Trenching, chopping, quadrant and epinucleus removal were all performed under low bottle height, including cortex aspiration. Centurion phaco machine with gravity fluidics was used in this case, mind you, not active fluidics. Just highlighting the fact that active fluidics is not always essential to perform this low pressure surgery. Reducing the bottle height will work quite well. So I found this principle of using low flow, low pressure surgery uh, quite beneficial in eyes with postipolar cataracts and uh, it does have an impact in reducing the incidence of posterior capsule tears in these vulnerable eyes. I did try the oval rexus in this case, although it needed to be slightly bigger to be more effective, but it does help us in providing better access to manipulate the epinucleus hence makes it significantly easier to remove uh, the subincisional epinucleus. A larger oval rexus will potentially help in minimizing the raise in the intercapsular pressure and which could play much more significant part in preventing the posterior capsule rupture in these vulnerable eyes. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.